Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. This project is going to be programming. We're going to be using the OpenCV library to do body tracking. So at its core, the way the program works is it tracks faces and it tracks colors. So here you can see it's tracking my face, the blue on my right hand, and the black on my left hand. The program runs a little slow when I also do screen capture, but just imagine it's running really smoothly. Here the program is tracking my face and the black color of this glove. Here you can see the program tracking the last 10 or so positions of the glove and creating a trail. In this lighting, my hair appears somewhat dark, so I have to wear a hat to keep it from interfering with the black color tracking. So you can do some cool things with the joint tracking. So for example, I have the program recognized when I draw a circle, when I draw horizontal lines, and then vertical lines. Here I'm holding an orange and blue t-shirt to make the color tracking really obvious. And on my belt, I have a black sock. And you can see we have kind of a whole skeleton here. And here I've added lines between the joints to act kind of like bones to really make the whole skeleton skeleton-y. The program works best when there's no color interference. So you can see here, I've got a pretty white background. I'm wearing neutral colors, a gray shirt and khakis. And you can see the program is working pretty well. All right, let's take a look at the code. So this is the code for the clips you just saw, and you can see it's just over 400 lines of code. So I made a somewhat whittled down version. It's closer to 100 lines, and it's got all the same core functionality, just some of the bells and whistles removed, which I think is a little more manageable for one video. And <laughs> disclaimer, I'm not a programmer or anything, so I'm sure this is all horrendously inefficient. And if there's something starkly incorrect, let me know in the comments. And I guess with that, let's jump into it. So we're going to import two libraries. We'll be calling functions from NumPy and CV2. And in CV2, um, instead of the typical RGB color scheme, it's BGR. No big deal, just a different order. And if you're not familiar with how colors work with computers, or rather computers work with color, um, each pixel is assigned three values, one for the blue, one for the green, and one for the red. And each value is between zero and the minimum and a maximum of 255. And you can define any color, or at least any color that a computer can produce with those three values. So for example here, we're going to be referencing red later, like just a pure red, which is going to be no amount blue, no amount green, and maximally red. So the way we're going to be tracking objects in our program is with color recognition. So if we wanted to, for example, track something that's blue, we need to define a range of colors that we consider to be blue. Right, because if we were just going to say oh, we only want to scan for things that are perfectly blue, that means you know 255, 00, there's going to be very few objects that fit that description. So we're going to define a range. We're going to have a lower range and we're going to have an upper range. And yeah, if you just play around on a color wheel, you'll find somewhere around 100, 00, 00 is kind of the darkest hue that you still really consider to be blue and not just kind of a dark purple. And 255, 255, 100 is kind of the brightest, closest to green, blue, that's still pretty blue. And that's going to go into a in, uh, NumPy array. Then we're going to find the dimensions of our window. So the bigger this is, the slower the program will run because it has to scan that many more pixels. I found that 750 by 400 um, is still a good window size and it runs more or less real time. Uh, but feel free to adjust that. This face cascade. So, uh, from what I can tell, this is kind of a big thing in uh, OpenCV is object recognition. And in our case, we want our program to be able to recognize when there's a face in the image, not a specific face, but that there is a face. And it's going to do that via cascades. So, if you go into your OpenCV folder, you actually already have these downloaded. Just go into in your OpenCV folder, go to data, go to hard cascades, and there's a whole bunch of them here. And uh, we're going to use the one for, here it is, frontal face default. Um, and so I've just passed into the CB2 cascade classifier the address, or see, I don't even know if it's called address. That's how little I know here. Directory, <laughs> whatever, address of this um, hard cascade. And we're going to save that as face cascade. Great. And next up, we have this class joint. So for every joint, we want to store the x variable and the y variable. The joint just being the, the object we want to track, since it kind of looks like joints on a skeleton. Um, yeah, so that's kind of x and y. And then we've got a handful of methods. See, I almost said functions because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so the first one is gather points. We're going to pass into it frame. So uh, if I didn't explain already, the what we're going to be doing is screen capturing, so that means it's constantly 
taking in images and stitching them all together in a video, and it takes images frame by frame. So we want to do analysis on each frame one at a time. So for any given frame, we're going to pass frame into this gather points method with a low range and an upper range, which we defined earlier for blue. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a mask for that color range. So what it's going to do is it's going to search through the pixels in our frame, the reference image, and for every pixel that fits within this color range, the pixel on the mask is going to light up white. Otherwise, the pixel will be black. So that might sound a little weird. I'm just going to pull one up real quick. This here is a mask for uh, some random color range. I don't actually remember what it was, but for the colors that fit that color range on the reference image, which is just my face, which you can see in the bottom right, it lights up white. And all the other colors that don't fit that range show up black on the mask. So now we have that mask, what we're gonna do is we wanna collect all the points on that mask that are active, that are lit up, that are white. So we're gonna scan through all the rows and columns to hit every pixel in that mask. And we're gonna say, okay, if that pixel is white, 255, we're gonna store it um, in our active list. So at the end of this, that active list is gonna be full of all the active pixels. And you'll notice instead of sampling every single pixel, we're sampling every 10. That allows a program to run much faster and doesn't affect the performance all that much. You can toy with that number to find a good balance. And then what it's gonna do, we're gonna return that mask and that list of active points. So now that we have our list of active points, we're gonna find the average active point and that'll be, this, that, that'll be where we define the joint to be, right? So we have this cluster of uh, pixels that are in the correct color range. We just want to find like the center one, the average. So what we'll do is we're going to pass in the list of active pixels from our mask and we're going to say, okay, the average point is the average point of that list. Awesome. So the average point method, that's down here. All it does is uh, adds up all the um, X coordinates, divides by the number of X coordinates, right? So it returns the average X coordinate. And it's the same thing for Y. Uh, we can actually open that up. And you can see it does just that. Adds up all the x's, adds up all the y's, and then returns um, total x divided by number, total y divided by number, straight up average. And what our find joint uh, method is going to do is it's going to return a joint with uh, the average x coordinate and the average y coordinate. And there's another way you could go about doing this, which is by uh, finding the, the, the contour, so kind of the outline of the cluster of activated pixels. Um, I didn't include that here because it's it's not actually my work. I just found this online. But uh, go check it out on this link. I'll leave it in the description too if you want to give that one a shot. Um, so we're actually pretty close, right? So we, we have our joints located for all the color joints. Now we just need to find the head joint and draw them. So to find the head joint, we're going to have a list here of faces that were detected in our face cascade, instead of passing in the regular frame, just a gray version of it. And then we're going to search for the x and y coordinates and the width and height um, for each face in faces. And we want to draw a point in the center, or define a point just in the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x, add half the width, y, add half the height, and that should give us a point right in the center of the face. In the case that no face is detected, it's just going to return a default joint of x is 0, y is 0. Great, and the last method is just to draw. So what we're going to do is we're going to screen out the case when x and y are both 0. Otherwise, we're going to draw a circle at the x and y coordinate of that joint. So that's just cv2.circle to draw a circle. What do we want to draw onto? Our image, our frame, uh, the coordinates, the radius, the color, which we defined up top, and the line thickness. Um, we're going to start a screen capture, uh, define a variable cap to be cv2.videocapture0, while true, turns out true is always true, so this is going to continue to run until we break the loop. Um, it's going to yeah, continually refresh and update the current frame. So we're going to store the frame here. Uh, we're going to do cap.read, and it's going to return ret, which I actually don't even know what it is. It's some sort of boolean. I knew it once, but it doesn't matter. We're not going to use it. Um, it returns ret and frame, which is the actual information. This is the array of values for every single pixel. And uh, frame's actually huge. 
Um, the array that it returns is really, really big. We want to whittle that down to our X and Y dimensions. And then we're going to create this gray version of it as well. We're just going to do convert color, color to, or BGR to gray. So to find our head joint, we're going to find joint face method, pass in gray. Now what we're going to do is we're going to gather the points for our blue range, which if you remember returns a mask and a mask list. And we're going to pass that list into the find joint method, the find joint average method. And now we have our blue joint as well. And then we just draw. Draw joint blue onto frame, draw joint joint head onto the frame. And then we're going to display frame. So that's just cv2.image show. This is the title of the window that comes up, name it whatever you want. And then frame is our frame. And this is, like I said, going to continually update. And uh, at the size of window that we have and efficiency that this program is, it runs, it runs pretty close to real time. Um, and now CB2 is going to wait until we hit the key Q, in which case it's going to break the loop and uh, it's just going to close up shop. Uh, it's going to release the capture and it's going to destroy all windows. So that's the body tracking project. If you thought that was cool, don't forget to subscribe and yeah, see you next time.